everyone. Welcome or welcome back to another episode of my knitting podcast here on YouTube. Um, thanks so much for joining if you're new and if you're returning, then welcome back. Um, I know it's been quite some time since I last made any type of video content, so I'm super excited to be back. Um, to be totally transparent, I just needed a little bit of a break for some like health reasons um, over the last couple months. And yeah, despite not making much video content. I've been doing a ton of knitting and crafting and have a lot to share with you today. So it's probably going to be a little bit of a longer episode. So definitely get comfy. I think it's also perfect timing um, because I have mostly winter knits to share with you, um, some finished objects, um, one bigger whip on my needles right now. And despite not getting any snow for the last couple of months, we are getting about a foot or so today. So it feels right to record this and to catch you up on some of my winter knitting. Um, I typically do like to record monthly podcasts at least, but it's just a, been a little bit of a longer period, so I do have a lot to share with you. Um, for those that have reached out and either you know, sent me an Instagram message or an email asking how I've been um, and if I'll be back. Thank you so much for reaching out. Um, it really means the world when people that I don't know um, in real life and just sort of through the knitting online world or community uh, reach out and um, share love or support. It really means a lot. So thank you if you've made that extra effort. Um, it does go a long way. So yeah, let's um, get into the knitting. So the first finished object that I'm going to share with you, I talked a lot about um, in my last few episodes. It was a Christmas present actually for my husband. That's the last time I shared any finished objects with all of you. So um, I won't go into too much detail on this because honestly it's been so long that I don't remember a lot of the details, um, but I will share sort of uh, bigger, you know, ideas or concepts that I do remember from making this. So this is the Svensson Pullover. It's a pattern by Jared Flood um, or uh, Brooklyn Tweed. Um, yeah, here it is. Um, so I made this for my husband for Christmas. I did a pretty good job documenting this on Ravelry. If you want to um, find that project page, I did sort of a diary entry where I tried to sort of document what I was doing at what date. Um, this took me a couple months to finish. Um, it is honestly one of the biggest knits I've ever done because it's cabled pretty much front, back, and all down the sleeves. And it is for my husband, so he's obviously a little bit bigger than me. Um, so it definitely was a longer knit than I'm um, used to. So I thought it was a good idea to sort of document like how long certain sections took and what I did when. Um, so if you want those details, I will definitely link the project uh, page in the description of this video. So yeah, this is, um, it's a men's pattern, but there's also a woman's version that has a little bit more uh, shaping through the like bust um, and body. And it is a bottom up, Yep, I see, these are details I don't necessarily remember. So this is a bottom-up sweater. You knit um, the front, back, and sleeves all separately, and then you seam it together, which was also, I think, my first totally seamed uh, sweater as well. So I was super anxious to try this. Um, it took me a long time to find the perfect, like, cabled pattern. Um, for my husband, he wanted sort of a specific look, and this pattern sort of met those needs. Um, it is a worsted weight pattern, and I used... Uh, if you see me looking down, it's because I made a little cheat sheet here. Um, Blue Sky Fibers, that's right. Blue Sky Fibers wool stock worsted, worsted in the color Gravel Road and the color number is 1302. So it's this like lovely sort of taupey brown neutral color. Um, I like it because it's light enough so it shows the cables really well, um, but it's not like too, 
I guess, brown or cream. So it sort of matches a lot of different things. Um, I pretty much knit this two pattern. I knit the size 43 and a fourth uh, inch circumference. That's over the chest. I think technically like a medium size. Um, and I did meet gauge with the recommended needles, which were a US size seven for the body and six for ribbing. Um, I do did do some modifications, um, particularly on the bottom here. So this uh, called for a twisted rib. Um, I just did a regular one by one rib just to save some time. And I actually don't mind the one by one look at all. I think it came out really nice. Um, and then, oh yes, the neckline for this was probably my biggest um, hurdle. So if you look at the pattern and I'll put up a picture of it too, it has a pretty deep like boat line neckline. And when you're knitting this, you're, you're knitting from the bottom up. So everything sort of comes together at the top of the sweater. So you're knitting the neckline last. And when doing this, it I followed it to pattern and it looked just very, very wide. Um, so I left it like that. I actually blocked a whole sweater um, with the original neckline. And because this was a present, I was trying to keep it a surprise. Um, but I, what I ended up doing is I gave it to my husband. He tried it on. He didn't love the neckline. So I then got rid of it and sort of modified it into this um, tighter double knit one by one ribbed um, neckline. So a few issues with this. First of all, it, it does fit well. It, it fits like a nice crew neck sweater. However, because I knit this so much, I guess, tighter. I used smaller needles um, and then I sewed the double band down, which kind of cinched everything up. What ended up happening is it took the fabric from the arm and sort of brought it up. So he has less positive ease in the armpit, which makes it fit a little bit tighter than it would ideally. Um, it still fits really nicely, but I and he's being very nice about it, but I can see that it's a little bit too tight for him. So I think if I were to knit this again, and I wanted to do this neckline, which I recommend, um, I think it just looks really nice. Um, and it's a little bit more flattering on certain like men's chests versus the boat neck. Um, I would basically just knit the sleeves a little bit longer in the body section. Um, so maybe even follow like a size up um, and therefore you sort of make up for that lost space. So yeah, this is it. Um, it was a monster knit. I made for a really nice present. I'm very, very proud of it. Uh, I put a little tag um, in here, which unfortunately with multiple blocks has now sort of worn off. And it was supposed to say handmade by someone who loves you and with some like care instructions on it, but I might just pull that out um, and replace it with something a little bit more durable. I think the ink that I use to print these labels is just not, um, I guess, durable enough or it's washable and that's not good. So yeah, this is uh, the Svensson pullover. Um, I highly recommend. Um, that's about all I can remember and I'm glad that it's done. I don't know if I will knit him another cabled sweater anytime soon. Um, yeah, it was pretty demanding and um, I was knitting on it like pretty consistently for about two months and I was like rushing to finish it right before Christmas. And yeah, it's never fun to be rushing into the holidays. But anyways, I got it done. I'm very happy with it. He loves it. Um, it's definitely a, a really special present that I'll have for many years. All right, so moving on. Um, the next knit that I made um, after the cabled pullover was this sweater here. It's called the Mar Marseille Pullover by Petite Knit. I've knit this pattern before. I am going to overlay some video of me actually wearing these sweaters um, so you can see the fit. I don't do a great job of that in prior um, podcasts and I'm really hoping to change that for future ones. 
So yeah, this is the Marseille sweater. It's a pattern by Petite Knit. Um, like I said, I've knit this before. Um, the last one I made um, was more traditional to the pattern. It actually has these like stripes down the body and the sleeves, which sort of make it like a signature look. Otherwise it's a um, pretty classic um, drop shoulder, just regular pullover, which is why I knit that why I knit it. Um, this is also knit in Blue Sky Fibers wool stock worsted, so same yarn as I used um, for my husband's cabled sweater. And I had this in stash, I've had it for a couple of years actually, and I just sort of wanted to like get it off my shelf and make it into something. Um, I really, really loved this color. I don't have anything hand knit in like a dark navy. Um, if you look kind of closely, it's actually more of like a blue-green. I don't know if the light is doing it much justice, but um, it's a really beautiful shade. Um, speaking of that, it is Midnight Sea, color number 1317. And I had three 150 gram skeins, so Woolstock Worsted comes in either 150 gram um, skeins, which I think is like 350 yards somewhere in that range maybe yeah I think and then there's also 50 gram skeins so some of the more um, like neutral or basic colors come in the bigger skeins um, and some of the less like the kind of that more accent colors come in the smaller skeins so I had 350 gram skeins roughly about like a thousand yards and I got to the point where I actually had to go buy a 50 gram skein um, to finish it up. I got very, very close to finishing it, but I just did not have enough, um, which was kind of a bummer because it was a way different uh, color, like a, a, a different lot. Um, and I used it in one of the sleeves, which you can't really tell now, but in hindsight, I probably would have needed to buy a little bit more to avoid that. So for all of you, if you're considering that yarn, um, buy the bigger skein or a little bit extra. Yeah, um, I love the fit of this. It's kind of that like oversized sweatshirt feel, which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted a big cozy, you know, something to throw over jeans. Um, I knit the size small which is for the bus size 85 to 90 centimeters on US size six or four millimeter needles. Um, this is a top down um, sweater. So you start in the back, um, you knit it flat and do some shoulder shaping. You come around to the front, um, you join everything in the body and then you end up picking the sleeves up um, and then the collar at the very end. And yeah, I pretty much knit it to pattern. Um, I did make a little modification on the sides here. I did a split hem. And that's just because I wanted to change things up a little bit. So it's a little, um, it's like a stacked split hem. It's a little bit shorter in the front, longer in the back. And I think it just adds like a little extra detail um, that makes it a little bit more unique than just like a very basic pullover. Um, I did also have to add a elastic into the neckline. Um, it was very large. And so I sewed a little invisible um, elastic into sort of the upper hem here and pulled it tight. You can't see it because it's hidden in the stitches, but it's nice and stretchy. I had to do this a few times. The first time was a little bit too tight. Um, and the second time um, seem to fit well. So I like the fit of it. Um, I don't know if I would use this yarn again. Um, it is very soft. It is, the colors are beautiful. It's very affordable. Um, overall, I think it makes a really great like accessory yarn. Um, but for garments, especially this just very stockinette sweater, it's pilled quite a bit already, as you can see already in the underarm here. And I've only worn it a few times, so I don't really know how well it will hold up uh, for years to come. 
Um, so I would be a little hesitant to try this again for a whole sweater, but you know, for like a hat or mittens or anything, I think it's a, a beautiful, um, really nice yarn. And I really like the Blue Sky Fiber Company itself. Um, so yeah, that's my Marseille sweater. All right, my next finished object I am wearing, and I'll again overlay video of me showing you this and trying it on. Um, this is my field day jacket, which is a pattern by Ozetta or Haley Smedley. Um, I love Ozetta's patterns. I've knit quite a few of her designs. Uh, she does very like classic, simple, um, staple patterns um, and it seems to just fit seamlessly into my wardrobe. This was a like 2024 um, wish list knit or something. I don't know if, what you want to call it, but it was on my list to knit. I really wanted a oversized neutral cardigan that sort of doubled as like a light spring jacket. And this was exactly the pattern that I wanted to knit. Um, I also have her field day cardigan pattern, which is for a DK weight. Um, this is for a worsted plus a strand of mohair. So like a heavy worsted light Aran um, yarn weight. Uh, I use the recommended needle size, which is a US size eight um, and knit the size small. And I used what I think is probably my favorite yarn combination. I've talked about this before. I've knit a few other projects in this yarn combo and I'll show you here. I have one skein of each left. So this is what I used for this. It is Snelden, which is a Faroe Island worsted weight yarn. And then I used knitting for olive soft silk mohair and this is in the color oat. I'm not sure what color number this is. I think it might be like light silver or it's definitely more of a beige, like a gray beige. But together they make this just very gorgeous light neutral. It's slightly, ever so slightly heathered, which is really beautiful, but from far away, just a nice neutral light beige. So that's, that's the yarn combo. Um, I was gifted this yarn by a friend uh, a few years ago and had never heard of it until he gave it to me and I made one of Petite Knit's slipovers or vests um, and I was so overwhelmed with how beautifully this yarn blocks. Um, it's a little crunchy when you're knitting with it. Um, but after blocking, it just blooms so beautifully. It's it's just incredible, and it's also so soft after blocking. I can wear this easily next to skin, and it doesn't bother me at all. Um, and it's a very durable yarn too. And then cost-wise, um, it's affordable. It's very hard to find. Um, I did order it from a shop. I believe it was in France, so I did have to pay for shipping which is an ideal, um, but when you kind of do the math, um, the relatively affordable skein price um, makes it a little bit more of a attractive purchase, I guess. Um, so anyways, this pattern, um, you start at the back. It is knit top down. Um, it's a drop shoulder design. Um, you start with some back shape, sh shaping, 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 um, and then sort of work into the front. And what my favorite part of this is, is that the button band here is knit seamlessly or not seamlessly, concurrently with the body, which isn't necessarily the case with a lot of cardigan, cardigan designs. You often have to go back and pick up the neckline. Um, but this is done kind of at the same time, which is really nice because when you're done, you're done and you're kind of seeing it all, you know, happen as you're knitting it, which is really rewarding and just kind of keeps you going. Uh, I flew through this pattern. I just couldn't put my needles down. I just really wanted the end product, but also loved the knitting 
process of it too. So overall, I think it's probably one of my favorite projects and I've already worn it a bunch. So I'm very, very happy with it. Um, a little bit about the buttons here. I decided to use these like somewhat variegated, I don't know if you want to call them like tortoise shells buttons. Um, they're from like a little old box my mom gave me of buttons many, many years ago. Um, and I just happened to find a few that um, all matched. And what I did was I actually put another button on the back, on like the wrong side of the button band here to anchor the button a little bit more. I've ran into some issues lately with buttons when you're buttoning them. What happens is the button band sort of puts pressure on the how secure the button is like attached. I don't know if this is making sense, but it basically loosens the strand of yarn or thread or whatnot. However you secured the button onto the button band, it loosens that. So by putting a button on the other side and sort of weaving you know, the, the thread through, I feel like I have a little bit more of a secure band and it's going to help avoid that. Um, and you don't ever really see these buttons unless I'm blatantly showing you. So I just kind of keep it down like this and they it falls nicely. So yeah, I love this. It's super cozy. I would knit it again in a different color. Um, I considered maybe adding some pockets. Um, probably not with this one, but for future ones, I may end up doing that. Um, overall, it's just a really nice, really, really nice fit. And I do feel like it's unisex. Um, my husband was really jealous when he saw me put this on. He said he wants one too, but in like a darker cream color. Um, or darker cream would be brown. I don't know what he meant by that, but uh, yeah, so I feel like this could easily be worn by men and, and fit well as well. So yeah, that's the Field Day Jacket by Ozetta. I apologize if you can hear like snowblowers going. Um, it's just that time of day when everyone starts to clean off their cars and their driveways and that sort of thing um, in the midst of a snowstorm in Maine. Okay, moving on to some non-garment finished objects. Um, I have always loved making like little miniatures. Um, I did it as a kid. I really enjoy it as an adult. And I've sort of found my way into like knitting miniature things as well. Uh, so I've dabbled around a little bit with some different patterns. And um, yeah, I'm definitely in this phase where all I want to do is like make little things, little animals. Um, yeah. So the first little finished object I have here is a little tiny donut. I don't know if the camera is going to focus or not, but yeah, here a little donut. Um, this is a pattern by, oh gosh, maybe Julie Hoover. Um, I should have written this down. I just happened to see this hanging and thought I hadn't shared it. So yeah, it's a really simple little, I don't know if it could be an ornament, it could be a little accessory, but yeah, that was super cute. And I used these check glass beads that I found at Joann's for the sprinkles. I actually made a couple donuts um, as ornaments um, over the Christmas time, and this was just like a super mini version of that. So that's my mini donut. And that leads me to um, two of the little animals that I finished. So here are my cute little sheep. I love these guys. I, I don't even know how to explain how much joy these little animals bring me. Um, yeah, so let's talk about the pattern. I found this pattern on um, Etsy. It is called the Lamb Knitting Pattern by Sweet Patterns Lab. And um, I sort of modified it a little bit. I just more so bought the pattern to figure out like how um, 
they constructed the body and the face just to get the general shapes. I'm definitely not like a knitting designer, but I can sort of modify uh, patterns once I get a hang of how they're constructed or, or sort of the gist of them. So this one here, this first sheep, and I just made him a little scarf too, but maybe I'll show you his face a little bit more. So this was mostly knit to, um, to pattern. Uh, so what you do is you start at the base of their body and you knit this like very round, um, I don't want to call it like a little ball and you fill it with polyfill and then you knit the face um, on double pointed needles and then the ears you touch the ears and then the little feet on the bottom as well and then I added like a little tail at the back and to give it sort of that sheepy look I used a combination of all scrap yarn which was great um, the body is made with boucle yarn, and I actually have a little bit here. So this is the boucle that I have. Um, it's a Knit Picks brand. Um, I've not knit with boucle a lot in my lifetime, but I will say I don't love it. Um, all those little like twists and turns get stuck um, in the needles. But if you're knitting something like a little toy, it's relatively quick and it doesn't really matter if you're not picking up the exact stitch or you kind of make it a little messy because you don't you can't tell anyways once it's done so I just love the texture that it gives the body I did hold this together with a strand of um, just fingering weight um, white yarn to sort of have a little bit more structure um, and then the face and the ears and the legs are all scraps of that same worsted weight yarn that I knit this cardigan out of. So I had a bunch of scraps of this, um, which is really nice. So I was able to use that up a lot. Um, and then I just embroidered some, gosh, the camera's really not focusing well, but I just embroidered some um, eyes. I did a little French knot and then a little tiny um, nose and mouth and then I just put a little bit of like my own blush on his cheeks so yeah I twisted his head a little bit too mm, when I sewed it on really not purposefully but I kind of like the feel that it gives it's just a little inquisitive little sheep so that was the first one that I knit and then here's sort of a second version um, and I kind of just winged this a little bit more after I knew what the pattern was all about. Um, so he's a little bit bigger, a little bit more of a, <laughs> a beefy little sheep um, and yeah, uh, pretty much the same concept for the head. Um, I did add a little, ooh, oh my gosh dropping my sheep, throwing my sheep. I did add some little glass beads for his eyes versus the French knot, which I do like the look of it. It, it feels a little bit more real. Um, but keeping that in mind, I probably wouldn't like gift this to a baby or like a young child just in the case that, you know, kiddo likes to pull things off and put them in in their mouth and that would definitely be a swallowing hazard so um while I like the look of it it's probably not the most functional so yeah but it was kind of fun to experiment with different um like embroidery threads for their noses and eyes and generally I'm just thrilled with these little guys not sure what I'll do with them for now they're just sort of on my shelf uh, keeping me happy. <laughs> and then I made like this little scarf here, which is a lot of fun. So yeah, those are sheeps, sheep, lammies, whatever you want to call them. So in keeping with the animal trend, I got very inspired by the upcoming Easter holiday and decided to attempt to make a little Easter bunny or like a little rabbit toy. Um, so here she is. <clears throat> so this is 
uh, pretty much a self-drafted pattern. Um, I didn't really write anything down so I can't tell you any exact stitch counts but um, she's basically yeah a little little bunny toy. I started with her belly and sort of worked uh, my way up. I picked up some stitches and made some legs, some arms, and then um, played around with the head design a little bit. Uh, it took a while to sort of figure out how to get like a very mild um, snout but I really like how her face came out. I think she is super sweet looking. Um, I embroidered like a little pink nose and then used the glass beads that I have. And then I did these nice big flappy ears just cause I thought having dramatic ears would be really cute. So uh, I would love to knit her like a little spring dress or like a little Easter outfit. Um, Easter is in a couple weeks, so maybe I'll have that done. Um, maybe a little hat or something. I'm not sure. She definitely needs some cute clothes. Um, yeah. I'm just really enjoying knitting animals. I don't know why they're bringing me so much joy, but they are. And I will continue to knit animals, which leads me to my next, it's technically a whip. And <laughs> here he is. So he's not done yet, but this is going to be a moose. Um, there's a really great pattern um, called the Good Bear, and I've knit that pattern a lot. So this design is sort of roughly based on that design, um, but I didn't necessarily follow that pattern. So uh, I more or less, you know, knit the legs, um, decreased for the body, and then added some arms, and then yeah, made a little face, some ears. I'm being like super vague about this because I've been in this like really creative place where all I do is sort of, you know, play around with yarn and see what happens and sort of breaking my own rules because I'm very much a pattern follower. I, I knit things based on instructions and um, it's been kind of fun to sort of just follow what my brain wants to do. Um, and yeah, so he still needs a little face. He's faceless. The antlers were quite fun to do. Um, after I had done the head and the ears, I knit basically like a tube, um, this initial tube here, um, and put a little bit of floral wire up into it. And then when I sewed it into the head, then I was able to kind of bend the antlers to make it look more of a, like a moose. So, his head's a little bit wobbly, if you can see that. I had blocked him after everything was um, assembled, so I feel like I need to go back in and um, secure his head down a little bit more. But yeah, so this is my moose. He will definitely get a name. I have also knit Mr. Moose um, some clothes, which are just off my needles. <laughs> And I just blocked them. So here is a little pair of like dungaree overalls and a little tiny sweater. And these are both with like fingering yarn scraps. So yeah, I'm not going to go into detail right now. I feel like I'm going to finish him and then come back with a few more details. Let me know if you are interested in this kind of thing. I feel like knitting toys is more of like a crochet or making toys in general is more so like a crochet uh, craft. Um, but there's a lot of fun things you can do with like small circumferences and shapes and designs and that sort of thing. So yeah, I will, I'm going to put him together. He looks really cute with his little denim overalls and sweater. Um, he will probably get like a little pair of glasses or some other little accessories uh, and then yeah I'll decide what to do with him but yeah that's my moose um, moving on to 
I have one garment whip, um, which I am very excited about. I feel like I'm like really rushing through this podcast, which is fine. I feel like I'm like out of the swing of talking about projects and sharing details and that sort of thing. But if you have questions or comments or want me to explain anything more in depth, then just, just leave a comment or shoot me an email or something. I'm happy to answer. Um, again, I've been like just making a lot and not really like explaining it or taking pictures or sort of talking about what I'm making, which has kind of been a nice like little break, uh, from doing so, but I definitely feel out of practice. <laughs> All right. Next in my last whip is, um, it's called the Athens cardigan and it's a pattern by Man Me Choi, also Soup Knits on Instagram and Ravelry. It's a um, Korean knitwear designer. This is my first time knitting any of her patterns. And I'm making, again, the Athens cardigan. So this is as far as I've gotten so far. This is as far as I've gotten. <laughs> um, so the Athens cardigan is a top-down, all-over cabled, beautiful, beautiful design. Um, it's a pretty classic looking like Aaron style, uh, cardigan. And that's why I loved it and wanted to cast it on. I've really been itching for a cream colored, like classically cabled cardigan. Um, I know that's really popular right now. Uh, but yeah, I just, I just had to cast this on. I thought it was a really good time to do it. Um, I started maybe a couple weeks ago, um, which have, would have been the beginning of March. Um, and that will probably lead me through like April and maybe finish this in early May. Um, so it's sort of my one last like winter project. Um, and I think because it's like cream colored, I'd easily be able to wear this, um, in the spring with some like more lighter pastel spring colors um and then put it away and then bring it out again next fall so uh this pattern um there's actually a few different versions uh, i believe she released it first in 2021 and then um came out with some like edits or like other options for sleeve designs and, and collar options in 2024. Uh, so when you buy the pattern, there's a few different versions of it. And I'm knitting the 2021 one, <laughs> 2021 one. Um, but I haven't decided about the collar. So I, I will continue the cables down the arms. Um, but I'm not sure if I'm going to do, um, the, the collar, either like a standard collar or like a, a higher neck collar. I think it might come down to how much yarn I have left. So yeah, I'm on the back section. Um, I'm about to split for sleeves. I'm getting very, very close. Um, this is a beautifully written pattern. I'm really excited and really pleased with it so far. It's super easy to follow. I've pretty much memorized a lot of the um, like different sections here so I'm not like staring at the chart necessarily and it's really easy to spot um, any mistakes. I just really love these like classic cables this big like diamond one um, and these obviously these you know very traditional cables so it's just a great design and I'm super excited about it. I'm knitting this with um, Peace Fleece which is a worsted weight yarn that is um, a U.S. made uh, yarn. And I bought this at my local yarn shop. It is a um, worsted weight, 75% uh, uh, Rambouillet and 25% mohair yarn. Um, so it is super, super soft. Um, I think this is woolen spun, but there is some twist to it. Don't quote me on that, but my swatch, which I don't have with me, blocked really, really nicely. Um, this was sort of exactly what I was looking for when knitting a cream-colored cabled cardigan. I wanted something that looked sort of like, I don't know, 
80s vintage fleece uh, cable. I don't know if that makes sense, but this is like sheepy enough with definitely lots of like, you know, flex of like vegetable fiber, um, but still soft enough to wear next to skin. So it's like a really nice combination of sort of a rustic wool, but also really soft. Um, and this is in the shade Antarctic white or just like the un, I think it's undyed. And I bought six of these total, which I think yardage wise should get me through this whole pattern. But if not, I could easily use this for leftovers, um, to make like little accessories or something like that. So yeah, I'm really excited about this. It's knitting up really quickly. Um, I'm not quite sure what happens after I split for the body. I think I pick up the two front panels um, and then connect again in the round. Um, yeah. If you are looking for a cabled um, cardigan design, uh, Soup Knits has other options too. Um, there's one that's like, I hate cables or something like that. It's a funny name for a uh, cardigan pattern. So yeah, check her out. I will have everything linked below in this episode, um, including links to my Ravelry and um, I guess my Instagram too as well, which I typically have in my like Instagram bio, but I'll include that as well. So yeah, that was actually it. And this wasn't as long as I thought it was going to be. Um, but it at least updates you a little bit on what I've been making. Um, again, I feel like I flew through this, but that's fine. Uh, I will try not to take too much time in between the next one. Um, I'm sure I'll have a few other little animals or miniatures to share with you because that seems to be what I'm like itching to make right now. And yeah, as always, um, please leave comments um, with questions or anything you want to talk about. Um, I will do my best to respond. And yeah, as always, happy knitting and I'll catch you next time. Okay, bye.